a quorum uh, present as well as on Zoom. So uh, we can uh, call the meeting to order if uh, I'll ask uh, Representative uh, Williamson, would you open us up in prayer? Uh, and you're number 23. 16. I guess so. Okay. Uh, let's pray. Uh, thank you, Grace, for helping me and Father for the beauty of this day. We just pray that um, you would be with us as we try to decide what's um, in uh, in your will as, as it affects the citizens of this state. Bless our families and all those that are part of this process. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you. It is a fine day. And if it wasn't for a bank meeting, we could, you know. Uh, but that's more fun, so we get to do that. We get through with this. We can do the second best thing, go out and enjoy the day. Um, okay. Um, we're going to start with um, House Bill 111. As you may recall, We this is the bill that uh, uh, Representative Williamson's bill. He presented the bill last week in hearing. So the way we... Uh, the way we work this in the banking committee for our new members is we'll have the hearing and then the, uh, the uh, author would give brief remarks uh, summarizing the bill again. The uh, members, if they have questions, can ask them, but there's no witnesses for the, uh, for the bill except for the author. So I'm going to recognize Representative Williamson to, to uh, remind us of the bill that we had the hearing on. And uh, at that point, then I would entertain a motion when he is done and the questions are over if there are any. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I bring for the consideration of the full committee, House Bill 111, that is LC5010031. Uh, it is a 30 page bill, which is pretty indicative of the fact that it is a housekeeping bill it's uh, part of a, a multi-year effort now. I keep forgetting, but I believe this is the seventh year as the uh, Georgia, Department of, um, uh, Georgia Department of Banking has worked with the financial services industry that it regulates in, throughout Georgia to modernize and improve, streamline, and bring our uh, banking code fully up in the 21st century. As with any department, uh, they will have technical uh, corrections each year. Hence the need in when you do technical and small corrections throughout um, the entire banking code. That's what uh, makes it develop into a multi-page bill such as this. But the, uh, that being said, this bill does come with a, a support and, and the, frankly, the input throughout this whole process, months long input between sessions from uh, representatives and in interests of the Georgia Bankers Association, the Community Bankers Association, the League of Southeastern Credit Unions, which is formerly known, and we all still refer to it as the Georgia Credit Union Affiliates, the Mortgage Bankers Association of Georgia, and the Georgia Financial Services Association. So again, it just uh, seeks to, uh, it did have some pandemic related uh, uh, issues in the bill to allow remote meetings of both shareholders for credit unions, uh, members of credit unions and shareholders of, of uh, state chartered banks. Um, and it did have some, again, sort of pandemic related uh, flexibility offered through the installment lenders um, uh, loans that uh, can never be more than 30 five months, and, and if you recall, the installment lenders loans only go up to $3,000, but with the mutual agreement between the, the borrower and the, and the lender, these loans can be basically hit the pause button without any additional fees or interest being accrued uh, to the detriment or uh, against the borrower to allow them the flexibility to get the cash flow back online, and yet the, the lender still stays within the legal guidelines of not um, not going over 35 months with this approved extension methodology, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that the committee members might have. Otherwise, it has to be a favorable consideration and yes vote on this bill. Mr. Vice Chairman, do you have a, a question? I don't have a question, but at the appropriate time, I'd make a motion we do pass. Okay, let me check and make sure. I can't tell who's 10 and who's. 
Oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry. You, you have a question for the author? Is... I was just going to just let you know I'm prepared to. Oh, okay. He's already said Both. he's ready to do pass. I'm ready to second. Okay. Well, I'll recognize the first person to make a motion that they ask. Okay. I make a motion, Mr. Chair, and we pass uh, House Bill 111. We have a motion do pass on House Bill 111. Do we have a second? We have a second over here. Any further discussion of the members uh, related to uh, House Bill 111 on Zoom or in person? Seems like we have none. We, uh, so all those in favor of House Bill 111 uh, say aye. Aye. Any opposed aye. like none? Okay, and I believe that was an eye for like sign on Zoom. Okay, so congratulations, Mr. Representative Williamson. Um, okay, next, now the next two uh, bill and a uh, uh, resolution that we have will uh, be uh, uh, hearing only. So this will be questions for uh, members of the committee and uh, if there's somebody in the in the audience that happens, I don't know if we had, I don't think we did a sign up sheet, but if there is, you can speak for or against the bill. Okay, uh, Representative Gunter, are you ready to uh, present your uh, proposition, House Bill 306? I believe I am. Okay, well, uh, proceed. All right, sir. thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now what I'm bringing is a uh, bill that amends uh, Title 14, Chapter 2. Uh, to allow for video conference uh, shareholders meetings. Uh, this would be, uh, they, could, they could hold a meeting entirely uh, by uh, Zoom or whatever type of uh, program they wanted to use. And so this is a, a total virtual meeting and the uh, uh, provisions that are in the uh, bill uh, all talked about, uh, there's uh, articles of incorporation that set out that they can do that. If it's in those articles, that's how they do it. And it also has some uh, rules with the uh, uh, who participates and uh, what the corporation's responsibilities are to make sure that uh, each person that's attending the meeting uh, has an opportunity to be able to speak. And uh, with that, I think uh, those are the provisions of the bill. Any uh, questions from the uh, committee members on Zoom or in person uh, for Representative Gunter? Uh, it appears Ms. Clark, uh, Representative Clark, has a question and she is on Zoom. So is she? Uh, go ahead with your question, Representative Clark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm just curious. So we just passed HB 111 and I. Um, if I heard the author correct, did, did that bill not allow for video conferencing for shareholder meeting in that particular bill? And if it did, then what does House Bill 306 do that House Bill 111 did not do? I think the uh, difference is in 111, uh, it's a, a narrower hybrid type meeting. Uh, this would allow for a virtual meeting in its entirety. That would be okay. the difference. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Representative. Um, any other questions? I know it'll be asked. Uh, I'm assuming that this Zoom does not change any fiduciary responsibilities or any from any participants on any board who Correct. may be uh, no changes. You still have the same obligations, yes, regardless sir. how you attend the meeting. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, you're correct. Any other questions? Representative Gunner, you did a good job explaining it. Uh, but this is a very smart committee. They figure things out very fast. So <laughs> Thank you. They don't need a lot of, a lot of questions. Uh, I, I, and I appreciate that. Very yeah. Much. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you for coming. Yes, and sir. we'll be in touch with you about further movement on your bill. All right. Thank you. Okay. And at this time, I'm going to take my leave because I have another committee meeting. Excellent. You are excused. Thank you. Um, and I, but I don't think we put a sign-up sheet. Is there anybody from the audience that has anything to say uh, concerning HB 306? Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Um, okay. So this will be a first.
for the committee. Um, Representative Schofield, who is the author of House Resolution 72, is joining the uh, meeting by Zoom. Well, I was understanding you were on Zoom. How did you jump out of the screen? Uh, that's like seeing a movie star. You know, you're so used to see them, and, and then they jump out of the screen, and they're right in front of you. Uh, it's, it's startling. It's startling. It's, uh, I'm sure all the members are jolted, and uh, give us a moment to collect ourselves. And uh, Okay. Uh, in person is uh, excellent. So, Representative Schofield, tell us about your resolution, uh, House Resolution 72. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I wouldn't miss this opportunity to see all these handsome faces uh, oh, and, wow. and my colleague. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I bring before you House Resolution 72. It's a resolution urging Congress to place a moratorium on negative credit reporting due to the COVID-19 pandemic. My businesses and constituents have been begging for some help. Credit scores, as we know, are used in so many things and impact our lives. Credit depends on our daily lives. A credit report is more than just loans. A negative credit score follows you um, and you end up paying higher premiums from everything from healthcare to insurance, mortgages, equipment. The cost of doing business is greatly impacted. Listen, I know many of us uh, were not prepared for the life situations and impacts due to COVID-19. Many people lost their jobs due to no fault of their own. Many have still not received their unemployment and benefits from the Georgia Department of Labor, still waiting on appeals. And also the unemployment benefits can't cover the salary that they've lost. As you know, many people were furloughed. Parents had to readjust their livelihoods to homeschool their children and single parents were the hardest hit on their credit. Businesses have also stuffed, suffered because they had to pay out of their pockets personal accounts to keep their business running and they've now been dinged for credit negative credit repairs. Those that were closed or even coming back have delayed payments because of COVID are receiving negative backlash on their business credit and their lines of credit. People who had good credits before uh, COVID now have a huge barrier and it's a problem that they may never recover. Credit impacts current and future employment, housing, education, your student loans, and especially business loans. Again, when you get behind, you end up paying more for everything. Your business is labeled as a risk. You're personally labeled as a risk. For example, there's an extra assessment fee, a risk assessment fee, when people are now buying cars or applying for mortgages. So if you're in a hole and you've got a ding on your credit, how in the world are you expect to recover? It's not that people or businesses are intentionally not paying, they just couldn't pay because of, due to no fault of their own. So we um, need to give our citizens an opportunity to recover. They can't, um, it's recover, they, they, they need help on this credit moratorium. So I'm urging us to pass a resolution to get Congress to acknowledge and help the businesses and citizens of Georgia. I'll take any questions. Okay, are there any questions uh, from the committee for Representative Schofield concerning her, uh, Preacher Nix, you're over there, where is it? 11, hmm? okay, yes sir, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Representative Schofield, I, I think this is a, a good bill. My question is, would this have a, a cutoff date that this is what happened after March of 2020, if you were, having really bad problems prior to that time, would that all go away? Would this just start with the, the, the COVID timeframe for this? This is just starting for the COVID timeframe. If you had problems before, this is not going to uh, give you a pass. This is specifically related to COVID-19. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative uh, Perkle, I believe, on Zoom has a question, so you can uh, ask your question, sir. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, would you please, uh, Representative Schofield, would you nod your head if you can hear me okay? I'm on my computer and I have no idea. Thank you so much. We got uh, you. We can hear you loud and clear. So I have, I do have a concern uh, about about this bill. As I understand it, the credit score is a, is a risk assessment of your ability to pay back loans that you might um, you might incur 
my, my concern is, so there are a lot of people that have been thrown out of work through no fault of their own through the pandemic. Um, in the past, there are a lot of people's credit have been negatively impacted by being thrown out of work for, you know, a factory closing down or um, a spike in unemployment in a certain area and you were thrown out of work and you're not, unable to pay. My concern is starting a, a, um, an exception for collecting quantifiable data uh, regarding your ability to repay financing, um, repay a loan, the credit risk that you might be. And I understand uh, the, what I understand to be your reasoning to do this because of the pandemic and the number of people that are unemployed. But uh, going forward, um, there is currently, as I understand it, an, an ability to uh, to put a response or an explanation on your credit report that uh, I was unemployed due to I'm a waiter at such and such restaurant when the pandemic hit, I was t thrown out of work. If you look at my credit score before, so there's explanations as you could put at the bottom of your credit report. Are you are you concerned that this could be a trend that um, that we do away with these explanations that you could put on your credit report? Uh, because it is just a quantifiable measure uh, of, and if you are thrown out of work, uh, if they're relying, my concern is if, if you're applying for a loan and they're looking at the credit score of yours before you've been out of work for eight months, you might get a loan on a car or a house or a credit card that you can't pay because they're using outdated information. Uh, perhaps you might be unemployed right now. My concern is if this becomes a trend and uh, there are, that's a long question and I apologize for that. But I want you to understand that's, you know. So I understand your concern. No, okay, you drive on, you. We're, you know, we're, we're all right. Um, so I do understand your concern, but okay. let me assure you, this is not the beginning of a trend. This is to provide a, a safety net for businesses mm -hmm. and for people that have gotten in this space due to no fault in their own. This is not a free pass on anything. Yes, you can put your information in the credit bureau, but this does not that does not protect you going forward from getting jobs and so on and so forth. So this is not a trend. This is specifically geared to what is going on in COVID right at this point. After so, that, it, we're lifting the moratorium. So Mr. Chairman, could I have one follow-up? And I promise I won't be quite as long on this one. Yes, sir. Um, so what do you say to our banking friends that uh, are making decisions every single day uh, about loaning money and it appears that if Congress actually did this, that the, one of the reasons, and this is not the only thing that they use in determining credit risk, but you're taking one of the tools from them in order to ascertain the risk of this borrower because you know they could have thrown, been thrown out of work out of their, you know, because of the pandemic, but you're, you're in essence taking a, a tool from their toolbox in order to ascertain the risk of a of a client uh, in loaning their money on behalf of their stockholders and the owners of the bank. So what I would say, and I'm gonna answer it probably with a, a question, what would I say to a business who has had the impact during COVID, getting back on their, seat, or their feet, they were late in some payments, they have to get a business loan now because they're moving forward. What, what do we say to them? What do we say to the uh, person that needs a job, but during COVID, she, she ne may not have lost her job or maybe she has lost her job, but now she can't get one because her credit is dinged. What do I say to that? So again, I'm not protecting some and hurting the others. This is a simple moratorium to stop it and help give some release to the citizens in Georgia and the businesses right now between this gap. I think that's, that's a reasonable ask. Well, well, thank you for that. But I'm, I was just mainly concerned about a data vacuum that, okay, this is, and as a bank, as a former banker, as a reformed banker, if you will, uh, you know, I have loaned money to um, people that were bankrupt uh, because I don't just look at the credit score, but that is something to look at. I look at, 
Um, you know, where you've been with your employment, how you've actually paid me back before is, that's a big deal for me as, as a former banker. Uh, and that, that's just my concern is if we, if we take this, if we create a vacuum of, of data and then our data is not, it's not correct, um, that, that is just concern I have. But thank you for listening to me and for answering my questions. Well, thank you that you were a banker that was on the good side, on the right side. I have a couple of <laughs> bankers that, um, and I, I'm not against bankers at all, but again, I'm trying to look at the whole picture and I hear what you're saying. So thank you for that question. Vice Chairman Yerda, you have a, you have a question? Or is I it, oh, okay. I I'm, I'm sorry, Chairman Dickey. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I have the same concerns as, uh, Chairman Perkle, uh, I'll try to say it a little quicker though, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he's still I, on the screen. I mean, too. I, he's not I, going away. I, I, I uh, um, Representative Schofield, I appreciate your uh, your passion, uh, com compassion uh, for for people that really have had some difficult financial situations uh, during this COVID uh, through no far of their own. But, but my concern is, is like Chairman Perkle, I think you end up sending false, faulty information to the lenders uh, and it's gonna put them in a, um, in a bad situation since they would not have that. You're really not changing the actuality of the, of the facts of, of what the actual situation is. You're just covering them up is, is what you're really doing. Delaying, delaying um, and, and, and What's what the bankers, the lenders, the businesses that need this uh, credit reporting information to be able to make um, good sound business practices. And so uh, that's my real concern about it, uh, too. It's just you're, you're not fixing the situation. You're just covering up. And so I, I, I just wouldn't be in favor of this. But thank you. I, I appreciate it. You also have a bill. Uh, House Bill 53, I think, that addresses this, infam this uh, same situation uh, in, in Ag and Consumer Affairs Committee. So, thank you. Thank you. You don't have a, um, a, a date in the bill from now till the end of whatever. It's just open ended from however long the pandemic is. Right, because I, I can't close it on a, on a pandemic that uh, we don't know. Again, we're not, you know, I want to be able to have the data and the, you can still report, but what we don't want to do is hinder and cripple our businesses because they're trying to move forward and they may be recovering and getting back on their feet. I was just thinking the rent moratoriums and all those have they were expired dates, and they then they expire, they so you know, maybe something to consider. Okay, okay. let me see. Uh, who is number 10? I, I'm, I'm all discombobulated. Okay, go ahead. Now, you were next, I believe, on the queue. Representative Schofield, first, thank you. I appreciate your uh, compassion and the empathy, and I empathize as well as a career community banker for 23 years, having spent over 18, 19 years as a lender. Um, I have seen through uh, the dot-com bubble, the recession, and now the pandemic, Many individuals that have been impacted in their credit scores were one component of the analysis that lenders did. My question is, um, while this does give an opportunity to allow individuals to, um, I guess, uh, have a pause, if you will, on their credit scores changing due to any adverse action to their credit during a pandemic, if they've been directly impacted, this does not give any delineation between that of people who have not had any impact and thereby as a lender, it's already our job. We've received some guidance from the FDIC and I'm sure um, the OCC and the CFPB to document those businesses and individuals that have provided documentation for any impact that they have. Um, that's actually a part of the PPP process. It's also part of many banks that made a decision back in the spring and summer to do loan deferments. And um, I think I'm just concerned that this resolution doesn't. And so my question is, is what is your thoughts on having a separate process with the credit bureaus to um, consider the possibility of an individual having a pipeline to report? Example, here is I'm now receiving unemployment. I was laid off due to COVID-19. 
And I would like to provide this to the credit bureau so that they can flag that specific to those consumers and small businesses that have directly been impacted. But I have a lot of clients that quite frankly, whose businesses have thrived and they've hired some of those unemployed people. They've not had any impact. They're extremely busy and therefore their credit scores, I think should be reflected because as a banker, the last thing I want to do is, is have somebody that inadvertently allows a pause like this for them to start making decisions to uh, slow pay or not pay right. because they know that if it's not being reported, some people may not find out. And I think for a bank to make sure it's protecting its shareholders and its depositors that we've got to maintain some type of integrity to the credit scores of, of all those that we're serving. So do you have any thoughts as it relates to that or to delineate between those that have been directly impacted and those that haven't? Well, you know, what I will do is I'll go back and look at that. Um, but um, to your point, that that is really the purpose of this. I want to make sure that you have to provide the proof that you as uh, required for you. You can't just say, oh, I was laid off or I didn't, I was delayed payments because of COVID. Everything has to, there has to be proof in this. So I, I agree with you. And if I have to go back and work a little bit, I'll work a little harder on this um, on in getting that language spelled out. Thank you. Who was 14? Is that I'm 14. Uh, who? I'm 14. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, 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 okay. All right. Uh, Representative Ward, you have a question? I do. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Representative Schofield, um, this is not to make a point. It's just for um, clarification. In the situation where uh, businesses lose their credit ratings, the credit slips, how do you see this helping the businesses recover? Well, I think, thank you for the question. I think what it is, is it's, it's, it serves notice that if they're slipping, it's an opportunity for us to close the gap and find out why. It gives them a buffer to explain their situation as the, you know, again, I'm hearing from a lot of businesses that they just can't, they're getting back on their feet and they're being dinged and having to uh, get more, pay higher premiums on getting the things that they need. This bill is really about helping the individuals though. These are the people that have lost their jobs more than protecting just the businesses. This is a pandemic. I have students that now their student loans are impacted. I have people again that can't get housing that, that are struggling to try to get jobs because their credit is being dinged. So, you know, there is there are some, some avenues for credit reporting. We're gonna protect that sacred space, but people need help. Our citizens need help right now. May I, may I ask a follow-up question? Um, Chairman mentioned that they're on rent um, Moratorium. moratoriums. Um, there are sunset dates. Would you consider a sunset date for this? I would. And if we need to uh, revisit it again to extend it, that would be possible? That's absolutely a possibility. Thank you. Representative Douglas, did you have a, who's number six? No. Oh, uh, what, 12, let's try it then. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay. All right. Where we go? So, Rep Representative Schofield, thank you for the work that you've you've put into this. I, I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is: this is simply a, a, an urgent resolution asking Congress to act, um, which means we wouldn't control what they do. We can provide that input, have that conversation. Is there any current pending federal legislation that you know of that's addressing this? That's that's causing you to issue this, this resolution? That's the first question. Yes, thank you. Um, there were a couple of states that were working on this. And again, it tied back into the economic relief bill um, that there were some measures for the moratoriums on um, utilities, forbearance on student loans. So I'm working with Congress. I mean, there were a couple of, I, I, I apologize, I don't have the bill number, but it's a, it's a federal, I'm following their guidelines. Okay, and the, the second part of this, you, you hit on a few seconds ago talking to, I think a lot of the discussion has been geared toward business credit. But as I read it, the spirit of it is really the individuals who may be negatively impacted. Uh, you, you addressed that a little bit with the previous question, but do you have, is that, am I thinking about that correct? This is not necessarily for those businesses who may have different avenues of, of securing capital. Right. It's more of the individual who may be impacted. Right. This, yes, so this is for the individuals and the businesses that do not have a way to get there. Uh, again, I'm concerned that the hearing, the amount of 
uh, people that have been contacting us asking for some help because COVID impacted them through no fault of their own as it did all of us. So yes, this is about the, in the spirit of this is about the individuals and businesses that have thrived. You know, I am one of those ones that will host and raise my hand, but I'm thinking about the, the guys that didn't make it and are still trying to recover. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a couple of questions from Zoom. Uh, let's start with our senior questioner, uh, Representative Hughley. Are you with us, Representative Hughley? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I apologize, I didn't hear the entire discussion, but uh, am I correct that this is just an urgent resolution, uh, uh, Representative Schofield, and we're just suggesting to our members of Congress that we are really concerned about uh, our citizens who are being adversely impacted credit-wise uh, because of the pandemic. And we know that uh, those citizens uh, credit report affects how much they pay for their insurance, how much they have to, whether or not they can get housing, whether or not they can get employment or move to a better employment uh, situation is not just about loans. Uh, and, and so it's been my experience, Mr. Chair, that an urgent resolution is just that. We're, we're sending up to Congress a concern for them to work on. Is that not true? You're asking me? Uh, yeah, I think the author was saying it's an urgent Edward, resolution, yes. but I would caution the committee. We know how responsive the Congress is in Washington <laughs> uh, to uh, to what we citizens uh, propose. So we had better be very careful what we send up there because I'm sure they're going to yes, jump ma right on, you know, <laughs> what all the citizens across the country are trying to trying to get across. Uh, so, but it is an urging resolution. It, it is, that is correct. Uh, so uh, was that all, uh, Representative Hughley, did you have another question or? No, no, sir. I, I, based on the questions that I heard, it sounded like it was more legislation that we were gonna act on like right now. But, you know, in my experience, an urgent resolution is treated a little bit differently. So I just wanted clarification because I jumped on a little bit late. So it is an urging resolution. You were absolutely correct. Thank I don't you. Think that was brought out. So thank you for pointing that fact of the bill out. That's the first fact of it was an urging resolution. Correct. Uh, so thank you, Representative Hughley. Uh, Representative Clark, you have a question for the author of the, of the resolution. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, Representative Schofield, you mentioned in, when you were introducing the bill, um, the, the long-term impacts of negative credit reporting. And so um, is it my understanding that this moratorium would allow for um, there to be um, a moratorium that would help those more would help more long term. So what I'm saying is, if um, your credit score goes down because of the pandemic, but a year from now, you know, things are better, we've opened the economy, everyone's, you know, back doing what they were doing before, but you have this, um, this uh, negative reporting on your credit that's impacting either yourself as an individual, or your small business, from being able to do business, is it my understanding that that is what the goal of this moratorium is to protect businesses and individuals from the longer term impacts, such as um, uh, access to employment, housing, health care, and other uh, risk assessment fees? Yes, Representative Clark, that's the intent. Thank you. And then um, uh, just a, a follow up question, if I may. Um, uh, several other people um, on the um, in the committee have brought up that we need credit scores as a way of, of um, you know giving banks data that they can use um, in deciding whether or not to give loans. Um, but is it your understanding that banks also have other ways of assessing whether or not uh, someone is credit worthy? outside of just the credit score. And therefore this moratorium will not handcuff them 
from being able to still make informed decisions about whether or not to give loans in the future when we do get out of this pandemic and we are finally able to live like normal again. Yes, a- absolutely. It does not handcap handcuff them at all. It really is a, a, a protection. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Krug, is that your? I'm, yes, sir. I'm 15. getting mixed up on which these. Okay. You yeah, know, I have, you to have keep, a, You have a question. Uh, go ahead. I do, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. I have to keep looking too to see which number I no, am. No, you go ahead. You're on. Okay. Thank you, Representative Schofield. Um, to the last representative point, uh, Representative Clark, and to Representative Wade's point earlier, um, I understand and appreciate the, the purpose behind your urging resolution. And I know that it is just an urging resolution, um, urging Congress. My fear though, is that it's gonna be very one-sided. If we don't report any negative credit impacts, then that's gonna be putting the, the banks and lenders at a disadvantage. Um, so there won't be anything to talk about. There won't be any reasoning for them to have a discussion about because nothing will be getting reported. And it's more than just a credit score. The report has more detailed information about the lenders, the type of loan it is and that sort of thing. And so my concern would be is that if we don't report any negative credit for anybody, then those who are slow paying or, or, you know, would have had a negative uh, credit report regardless of the pandemic, then banks may be relying on that information to lend. Whereas if we made some sort of a flagging um, opportunity or something like Representative Wade had mentioned, a way to report it, but to to maybe bracket it or uh, you know asterisk it so that these credit reporting, uh, negative credit reporting items that are happening during the pandemic cannot be looked at maybe the same in the scoring process. Mm-hmm. That, that gives the lender an opportunity to talk to them about it. If they don't report anything, then they can't ask them what happened. But if it's during the pandemic, then they'll know that it happened here and give the banks an opportunity to make a more informed decision because they can say, hey, what were the circumstances? And then they could provide documentation. If we don't have anything reported, they won't have any reason to provide documentation of what happened. So thank you. Thank you. And again, I will look at, I can add that language in there and we'll bracket it to make sure that that's addressed. Representative Douglas, you have a question. Number one, we are number one. You are number one. Yes, sir. You were a bulldog. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I, excuse me for my tardiness. I was at another meeting. Uh, thank you, Representative Schofield, for bringing this. Um, and like the uh, general lady said earlier, this is a just a resolution, guys. Uh, it's not a bill. I don't see a problem with passing a resolution. Uh, I can't fathom what we're sitting up here debating like it's a bill. This is an urging resolution. And I heard all the concerns and it, it's really scaring me about the concerns you guys have about a resolution with the bills we just passed yesterday. I'm appalled that you will attack a resolution in this type of form. I mean, it's, what's good for one person is good for another. And maybe it's not hit you today, but tomorrow it's coming your way. You live long enough. You'll get affected by some of this. And when you're on the other side of this thing, you, some of you have been down here long enough to understand what I'm talking about. When you get on the other side of this thing, it's gonna come back and smack you in the face. And it's not fun. We try to work bipartisan. We try to work together. And you guys are taking her to the mat over a res- a urging resolution. Let like me break in just a second, Representative. I, let, let's let's be careful. I'm, I, I don't. Let's. We've always. I, I maybe I'm a little dull with it, but I, I I'm not getting that that people are. There's some concerns about credit reporting. I don't think anybody's really. We're having the, we're having the hearing. Okay. So we're, and that, that's why we, we're, we're doing that. Right. There are concerns. I don't think anybody has any personal, um, I, I don't, I, I feel like we're having a bipartisan discussion. I do. Um, so let's just, let's be careful. And I understand you're, uh, 
it was a vigorous debate yesterday on some bills. Man, Absolutely. There were some feelings a little, maybe a little raw. Absolutely. I've been on both sides of them. So let, let's, let's try not to let that bleed over into our, because I, I don't think our members are trying to, uh, are, are, are on attack. Uh, that's why we're here. We want to, because if there are concerns about Representative Schofield's legislation, she needs to hear them now okay. uh, and work through them now. I did hear her say she was willing to take a look at some of the concerns that have been, mm -hmm. you know, brought up and uh, uh, from, from a couple of the members uh, to make the resolution more palatable to them and, and more willing to take a look at, at, at supporting it. Uh, I would rather have anything that could potentially as important as this, I would I would prefer if it were to become uh, something that the legislature decided that they wanted to urge uh, that there be some type of uh, time limitation on it uh, if if we were to get there. But but uh, we're 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 just we're working we're just we're just working through it. I know you I know you're concerned about some things. You're concerned about constituents. We appreciate that. So, uh, but I, I'm thinking we're, I don't think we're, I, I think we're, I feel bipartisan today. I think we're, I think we're doing bipartisan work today. So let's don't, let's don't get upset with one another. Let's just work through it. Um, shut up. But I'm, if you got any more comments or questions for the, then, then please proceed. Uh, uh, I don't have any more comments, but I am concerned where we are. Um, uh, I know you are. You know, I'm concerned where we are. Nothing's bleeding over. I'm just stating the facts. And sometimes the facts are the facts. And sometimes they hurt and sometimes they don't. But this is just an urging resolution, urging Congress. It's not urging our, our state of Georgia. It's urging Congress, something federal. And I don't see uh, where the author has to go back and make some changes. She's because she's trying to get her resolution out. And that's all I got to say about it. Okay, Thank you're, 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 um, you, that's noted. Thank you, Representative. Um, oh, okay. Let's see, you were 10 or 14, 14, okay. Try that, Representative Ward, you're 14, I think. Correct. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Representative Schofield, to the Chairman's point, I believe you did mention that you will be willing to add a sunset date some time frame. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and another question for uh, Mr. Wade, yeah. is that you? Yes, uh, Representative Schofield and um, to my colleagues, um, concern and passion. Number one, I can, I, I understand it. I feel it. Uh, I, I totally get it. I remember crying with people during the recession. Uh, good people. Um, so I get it. <clears throat> um, what I would say is, is I think um, it, this is your resolution, and I think you should advocate for what you believe that you want that resolution to say on behalf of what you feel passionate about. I raise my concerns just using my career experience as to the totality of what we in the industry are trying to do to serve as many people as we can. And all I would say is that I would support fully a resolution to urge the regulatory um, agencies to promulgate rules. If that meant that Congress would need to act, then I'm in support of that. If that would allow for a direct access for consumers and small businesses to have a, uh, a, a manner in which to provide documentation so that they can, they can individually have their credit noted. There are ways that individuals who face fraud can have a, I, it's, it has gotten a lot easier for consumers to do that process than it was when I first started in my career. And I would wholeheartedly support a resolution that would just delineate those that have had direct impact. Because when, when I read the bill and I, I look, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a dumb banker. So I don't see that it allows in here to separate those that have had impact versus, you know, the many people who have not had impact as far as their ability to repay. And I just want to be able to honor both concerns. So I would support a resolution that would allow for it to focus in on a method for individuals to have 
their credit file notated as it relates to impact from COVID-19. And I think based on my experience at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the FDIC, their Consumer Protection Division, as well as OCC, and probably the Federal Reserve would all be very amiable to that type of an opportunity, which I think would benefit the people that you're passionate about. And I mean, I'm passionate about in my area. So that I just wanted to share that, that I think that there is a bipartisan opportunity to protect those consumers that have been impacted. And uh, just, you know, let, let my colleague know that I understand and I feel his passion too. And I just want to try to protect, I always try to look at things, protect all concerned. And in my opinion, having it paused for everybody could have unintended consequences that you don't intend to happen. And that would be difficult for the industry to, to delineate. So I appreciate you allowing me to share my thoughts and I appreciate your passion. Okay. Well, and I thank you very much and uh, look forward to having a Zoom call with you so we can work this out. We haven't had enough Zoom calls, but um, thank yeah. you uh, again. I thank everyone for the opportunity. Yeah. I'll go back and readjust some things. It is an urging resolution, but I think once we get it right, it'll be something that we can be proud to urge. Uh, and we're, the, the, we're in the banking committee here, but now we're also talking about landlords and renters right. and other folks too and other businesses right. it's not just lenders right. uh, that's a big part of it but this this covers a lot a lot of people right. uh vice chairman did you have anything yes. um, representative schofield i appreciate your passion and and certainly all the passion in the room uh i know this pandemic is negatively affected everybody uh i'm a small business owner and i can tell you my business has been affected greatly my my concern is the unintended consequences uh if if the lenders or the vendors don't know exactly what the history is uh do you think it could possibly result in them making just fewer extensions of credit just to be on the safe side is yeah. Yes, yes, I do. So again, we're going to put some measures in this bill that kind of address that issue. But you know, what I'm saying is people that, that may have, you know, good credit, but they may not know the lenders or the banks may not know uh, for the last year or whenever the period was uh, to be able to extend that credit, you know, to make an informed decision. So that, that would concern me that it could have a, a negative effect on that and backfire and then make, you know, uh, people that that you know that might be eligible for loans or might be eligible for uh, extensions of credit from vendors uh, to not maybe not be successful to that. Right, and so I'll take that into consideration when I go back and work on this this legislation, okay. this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have had a vigorous discussion, uh, and I, I enjoyed it. And uh, thank you, Representative thank Schofield, you. and uh, you, appreciate you coming for the committee. If is there any other business of the members before the committee at this time? If there's not, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.